Get moving, Phelps. Roy's informant is the skittish type. Fifty bucks? Do they think I'm made of money? No, you just look like you're made of money. Oh, very good. The kid's on form. I'd say on a scale of dull to scintillating, you're a solid tedious today, which you can be pleased with. Do you ever listen to yourself? I don't have the same voices in my head as you do, Cole. Cole's dead in the market. He's stone cold dead in the market. He's stone cold dead in the market. I kill nobody but me. Get this. Middle of the afternoon. This crazy woman decides to set fire to the hotel she lives in. The fire brigade come and put it out. A couple hours later, she does it again. Phones up Central and says, I've set fire to my hotel twice today. Look where you're going! <laughs> Did they send some uniforms around to get her? No, that's the best part. The desk sergeant, he gets his share. Help me out. If I know Freddy, he'll cut and run if there's even a hint of trouble. We should get there quick. There's a the little sneak. That's him in the back, Cole. Goddamn Harry thinks he could... Freddy, you're looking good. You're gonna help me, right? That's what I'm here for. You got the money? The 20? Sure, right here. 20? I said... You want the money or the alternative? Tell us about the reefer, Freddy. We'll see. Another good Samaritan. Answer the question. Grass comes from Tijuana. They bring in 50 pounds a week. 50 pounds? Are you hallucinating, Freddy? It's stashed at a house at 1452 North Las Palmas. Names, Freddy. The guy at the house is a spick that goes by the name Juan Garcia Cruz. Be careful. He likes guns. Now, do I get my money? Do me a favor, Freddy. Spend the money on a bus ticket. You can't last forever on a snitch jacket. Let's go visit this cruise character. 50 pounds of dope. Crazy. Believe a story? Sure. A hophead like Freddy would raffle his sister for his next score. All units in the vicinity and any central unit. Citizen reports of 415 at 7th and Central. Unit to handle code 2. Identify. You idiot!
the hell? wrong with you? You know a Freddy Calhoun? Sure, I know Freddy. Freddy needs money to get out of town. Says he's prepared to blow the whistle on a primo reefer distribution ring. Says he Has can... Has he said how much it's gonna cost? Fifty bucks. And the department will front me the fifty? You can put in an expense claim. He's over at Mike Lyman's on Hollywood Boulevard. See what you can find out. Hey, you think those vice boys are gonna die? Parker or Blaine? Fifty bucks? Do they think I'm made of money? No, you just look like you're made of money. Oh, very good. The kid's on form. I'd say on a scale of gold to scintillating, you're a solid studio today. If you can be saved here. Do you ever listen to yourself? I don't have the same voice as I'm the majority of associated with this great industry. I have every confidence that the vast majority of movie workers are patriotic and loyal Americans. Get this. Middle of the afternoon, this crazy woman decides to set fire to the hotel she lives in. The fire brigade come and put it out. A couple hours later, she does it again. Phones up Central and says, I've set fire to my hotel to Christ, this is a nightmare! ...persons in Hollywood, as you will find elsewhere in America. But we neither shield... <laughs> Did they send some uniforms around to get her? No, that's the best part. The There's a the little sneak. Freddy, you're looking good. You're gonna help me, right? That's what I'm here for. You got the money? The 20? Sure, right here. 20? I said... You want the money or the alternative? Tell us about the reefer, Freddy. Who's he? Another good Samaritan. Answer the question. Brass comes from Tijuana. They bring in 50 pounds a week. 50 pounds? Are you hallucinating, Freddy? Get stashed at a house at 1452 North Las Palmas. Names, Freddy. The guy at the house is a spick that goes by the name Juan Garcia Cruz. Now be careful. He likes guns. Now do I get my money? Do me a favor, Freddy. Spend the money on a bus ticket. You can't last forever on a snitch jacket. Let's go visit this cruise character. 50 pounds of dope. Crazy. You believe the story? Sure. A hophead like Freddy would raffle his sister for his next score.
I'll ask you politely to move on. Next time I won't be so nice. You guys don't have to leave a mess. What happened? Dope peddler, Juan Cruz. You open fire and, well, the rest of the story tells itself. these things out of circulation. Juan Garcia Cruz. This is his address. This place looks like a front. to be in Spanish. You catch all the good ones, Phelps. Doesn't anyone eat regular meals anymore? Junkies feeding on popcorn and grasshoppers living on soup. Doesn't give me anything to go on. Seems irrelevant. to me. Ha! Phelps, you jump like a girl. <laughs>
Now we're getting somewhere. More soup? Who in the hell keeps a secret stash of soup? With Juan dead, we need a new suspect, Cole. Is there a pattern to the deliveries? This guy, EJ, seems to be bringing in most of the serious weight. The dates and times seem pretty regular. We should notify the border crossing. Those fuckers are probably in on it. Let's wait and see how this plays out. Hungry or something, Phelps? I'd say that's pretty good value for 12 cents. Factory sealed. Someone at the cannery has a lot of explaining to do. These are the guys keeping Juan so well stocked with soup. Find anything interesting? Brother says the morphine is still turning up. Makes sense. We have no idea how much of the stuff Lenny shifted. There's been no comeback from Cohen as yet. Maybe Confidential Magazine is right, and Bugsy is on the slide. You read that stuff? I wouldn't say it to his face if I was you. That is one hot-tempered son of a bitch. Right. Let's see if we can find out who's been over-seasoning the soup in this place.
LAPD. Who owns this factory, ma'am? Mr. Parnell. Howard Parnell. I'll let him know you're here. Please, take a seat. If you don't mind, we'll come with you. If you must. You just wanted a follower, didn't you? You sly dog. I must apologize for my partner's roving eye. He hates saying goodbye, but he loves watching them leave. Give it a rest, Roy. If you could show these men in to see Mr. Parnell, Doris. They're from the LAPD. Follow me, gentlemen. What is going on? LAPD, sit tight, fatso. You could be in very serious trouble. There's no reason to be rude. Take a seat, gentlemen. I'm sure we can sort this all out. Maybe you can explain why we found $5 bags of marijuana in sealed Parnell soup cans. That's an outrageous allegation. How do you explain it, Chubby? We found at least 30 cans, all sealed up tight with your label on them. Can I get a list of your employees? Of course. We have nothing to hide. Doris, can you bring me in the current employee listing? Here it is, Mr. Parnell. On the desk, please. Any name on that list that rings a bell? This is familiar. 1452 North Los Palmas, a Jorge Garcia Cruz. How are your sales, Mr. Parnell? Just fine and dandy, son. We're entering a new era of prosperity. I hope you're both big soup eaters. Mr. Parnell, do you know what kind of trouble you're in? Come clean with us. OK, so things are a little flat. We're deciding whether to lower production. It's taken a while to adjust to not having any military contracts. You know, we sold Uncle Sam five million cans of minestrone. The factory sealed cans we found suggest a very professional operation, Mr. Parnell. We're looking for an inside man. I know nothing about this. I want this stopped as much as you do. Quit lying, Parnell. How could the cans be coming off the line, sealed without your knowledge? You're the kingpin here. You want to make an accusation like that, son? You better have some goddamn proof. When I work out who's behind this, I'm going to throw them out on their ass. And then I'm going to throw you out alongside them. Ever heard of Juan Garcia Cruz? Not that I know of. He has a brother employed here. You know him? We employ large numbers of Mexicans. I I'm not familiar with them all. That's funny, Parnell. He has the same address as his brother Juan, who we shot dead less than an hour ago. You better give me something. Look, I'm not involved in this. I'm getting enough grief from Washington. There's an investigation going on into profiteering, like a guy shouldn't be able to turn a buck while the war is on. I'm sure thousands of dead Marines sleep soundly knowing that you did OK. <laughs> Tell us about Jorge Garcia Cruz. Jorge? I had no idea of his last name. His team does daily maintenance on the conveyor belts and cookers. So he's here now? 
No, maintenance is at night. Uh, night shift finishes around midnight. He would usually come in around 9 p.m. and have everything ready for the morning shift at 6. We'd like to take a look around the factory floor, Mr. Parnell. I hope we won't have to shut down the line. No, nothing like that. Thank you. I'm grateful for that. I'll show you around myself. I hate seeing how things are made. This is going to be like that time I went to the slaughterhouse and couldn't eat steak for a week. This is where the produce comes in. We peel and sort all of the vegetables and add them to the line in regular quantities. Fascinating. Why don't you keep quiet? I've learned something. Oh, good God. This really is turning into some nightmare school trip flashback. We're a proud company, detective. If something's going on, I want it stopped. This is the hopper, which boils and purees the vegetables. The other hopper is for the pasta. This way, please. You're loving this, aren't you, Phelps? The soup is labeled automatically in the can. Next stage is labeling. I'd like to see the packing and dispatch area, if you don't mind. Sure. It's over here. Follow me. This is one of our dispatchers. Sergio, right? Yes, sir. These men are from the LAPD. Sergio here records our outgoing deliveries. They all go in the book. Just there, on the desk. That's the copy of this kid. We're looking for repeat business in large amounts, Cole. What's going on, Parnell? There's enough soup going to this place every day to feed a company of Marines. What are you talking about? Can I have a look at that coin? Sure, why not? Silver dollar, right? Yeah, that's right. The markings on it say it's been taken out of circulation. Maybe. I'm not trying to buy anything with it. I like it. it brings me luck. Do you have access to the canning area? I do but I keep to my station, loading and unloading. Don't care much for soup. Sergio, if you don't give me something, I'm gonna go to immigration services and have you deported. I get a shipment once every two weeks. Ernesto does the driving. I don't know his full name. It's delivered here at night. Or he gets it canned up. From here it gets sent all over the country. What do you know about the 20th century market? Nada. I get the orders from upstairs. I send the goods where I'm told. And you don't know Juan Garcia Cruz? No. Not me. You're a liar, Sergio. You're in it. And I'm gonna break you for it. You're loco, Placa. I got nothing to do with Juan Garcia. We found 
found a matching silver dollar on Juan Garcia. What are the odds of that, Sergio? One and Jorge are brothers. They're cousins. They work for some evil gabacho. The guy is an aberration. He gives out the silver dollars. Jorge gets me a list of deliveries every morning. 20th century is always on. You keep your mouth shut for today, and I don't take you in. Do we have a deal? Do I have a choice? Is that a serious question? That's it for now, Sergio. If we need to speak to you again, we'll put in a call to Mr. Parnell. If you have to, I guess. We will be in touch, Mr. Parnell. It is imperative that things appear as normal here. Keep an eye on Sergio in case he gets tempted to blow the whistle. Thanks. I'll do that. You're going to overlook my little immigration problem, aren't you? Cheer up, fatso. We're going to let you go on squeezing these poor saps a little while longer. Well, until some commie union types infiltrate this place. I am glad to be out of that place. I never knew fresh vegetables could smell so bad. How many years have you been in Vice, Roy? More years than I want to own up to, Phelps. What are you doing? Do you have any idea who Rojas was talking about? The gringo runs the operation? Could be anybody. You don't expect those morons to be running the show, do you? If you ask Roas how much a silver dollar is worth, he'd probably say 50 cents. Sit tight. Let's take a look at what's going on. Either these customers are serious soup lovers, or I think we found our middleman. Car 11 King to KGPL. Car 11 King, go ahead. I'm requesting assistance in a B wagon at 20th Century Markets, 1558 North Highland. Numerous narcotic suspects. Code 2 only, no sirens. 11K, roger. Okay. Cavalry should be here any minute. LAPD, nobody move! I'll take my chances. Whatever you're carrying, hand it over. I'd say he's got about half a can left. I guess that makes me a pessimist. You can't take me in. Take you in? Be glad he didn't shoot you. I wouldn't have chased you. If it was up to me, you'd be talking out of a hole in the back of your I head. I want information. Senor, I would like to help you. But I got a family in Mexico I have to provide for. And my compadres are very unreasonable. Your compadres? Turn out your pockets. I need Ray to run down these silver dollars. I need to make a deal. I need guarantees. You have identification?
Sanchez Erto, Mexican, Tijuana address. Here's the deal, Erto. You give me information, and I won't give you to immigration. Give me EJ, the driver bringing in the shipments, or I'll make you for it. I run the shop. That's all I do. Start talking, Erto. I want the names of everyone involved. What difference does it make what I tell you? I'm still going to jail, no? Tell me about the soup cans. The soup is very popular, as you can see. I think you're the connection on the Mexican side. I think you're more than you like to make out. So now I'm the big man in this? I have big dreams. I want to make enough to bring my family over. Don't stand in my way, policeman. We know about Jorge and Juan. Juan is dead. Tell us how you know the Cruz boys. Ernesto put together this thing. He brought in Juan, Juan brought in Jorge. Continue. I was already here. Ernesto knows I'm illegal, so he threatened to report me if I didn't help. And the money is good. The gringos and the gringas, they love the reefer. And I didn't want to have to leave and start again in San Francisco. You're breaking my heart. You're going to jail, Erto. Our jails may be nicer than what you could expect in Mexico, but I can tie you up in red tape for years. You've got this one chance to cooperate, Erto. Give me your delivery, boys. Or you'll do every year that we were saving for them. All right. I... There's a shipment coming in tonight. To the soup factory. Parnell's soup factory. 1 a.m. Ernesto will be there. We should get some backup and stake out the cannery tonight. Freddy said they were moving 50 pounds a week. That's a lot of soup cans. I think this is an interstate operation. Moving dope around the country to selected grasshoppers. Local weed gets distributed in the usual way, through Pachuco street punks. Someone must know something about this drug baron character. Here they come. Let them unload the goods first. Now? Let's get them. your huh? back. LAPD, put your hands where we can see them. Go, go. Get in Throw out the guns. them, Cole.
Detectives, found something here you probably want to see. You want an address, we should see what the Federales have on it. One dollar per dead man seem like much for a human life. God damn. I think we found our stash, Cole. Take a look in these boxes. At the very minimum, another 50 pounds. Detectives, I think we got the guy. Does the name Cruz mean something to you? It certainly does. dollars here. Yet another silver dollar. Phelps, Earl, looks like quite a bloodbath. What was this all about? Drugs and money. What else? Speaking of money, where did that roll go? I picked it up for safekeeping. The department owes me 50. Ray, I have another two coins for you. Great. I've got something to show you. It's all set up on the table over here. There. Take a look at these coins you've been collecting. There are letters cut into each coin, along with not legal tender. Those are Morgan silver dollars from the 20s. They were removed from circulation and sent for disposal. A number of smelters around the country had the contract. Look at them together. Can you work out what it says?
first coin, M-A-S, the second, A-N-G, the third, K-A-Y, the fourth, M-E-T, the fifth, A-L-S, Mesenke Metals. A metal foundry. Would you like the address? Would I ever. 1034 Vine Street, Hollywood. We'll finish up here. It's already been a long night, Phelps. See if you can talk them into giving themselves up. wash whistle. That means pots and pans are lemon wash clean. It makes short work of dirt and cooking grime. Just a swish. I hope that big wad of cash doesn't weigh you down. It's your priority, Straight Phelps. We're close to bringing in one of the biggest dope cases of the year, and you're worrying about unsubstantial evidence? Locked. We need another way in. Back door, bro. Find some cover. Sanders. You know this guy? I should have known. Of course I know Roy. Roy and I have had an arrangement for Get many up. years. You're under arrest. Am I? The 
We have a yes. mountain of prima facie evidence, as well as the testimony. You'd be surprised how things have a habit of sorting themselves out. Evidence disappearing. Witnesses that can't be found. Policemen that forget. The impossible becomes probable when you have a client list like mine. Shut your mouth! Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Working vice can be a thankless task, Belts. But on behalf of the brass and the moms and dads and the concerned citizens, I'd like to commend you and your partner for smashing this dope ring. Reefer is almost as big a threat to the children of this city as communism. What about Sanders, Lieutenant? Leave Sanders to me, Phelps. The chief will be looking after that one personally. He will be brought to trial. Phelps, we are celebrating your success. Don't push your luck. Sanders is no longer your problem. Your platoon is what remains of recon. I'm folding you into the 22nd. You'll be going up that damned hill tonight. We're intelligence gathering, sir. I don't need intelligence, son. I need men who can hold rifles and kill Japs. Tonight, you're a rifle company. We've got cooks, mechanics, and stretcher bearers all going into the line. We aim to break them tonight, Lieutenant. Good to see you, Hank. You too, Cole. How's your war? Not quite what I expected. As long as I live, I will never get over that sound. Hey, who's that medic? He'll be killed going out there. It's Sheldon, the guy from the Osakawa Bridge. That guy's got no fear. <laughs> didn't make it. I didn't go out there to save him. What are you saying, man? I went out there to put him out of his misery, to ease his pain. Do you have a problem with that? Murder, Corman. That's war, Lieutenant. Smell the stench. Feel the horse breath on your neck. You need help, man. Call for me tonight, Lieutenant. When you're up on that hill. I've been up there three times already. The circles of hell have nothing on Sugarloaf Hill. Get this madman out of my sight! Boxing in the Marines. I found it a pretty humbling experience. Fix your sandwich, buddy. Corned beef and egg salad, 12 cents. Bologna and ham and cheese, 10. It's strictly a mugs game. You'll like this fight, though. A plucky limey's about to take a beating from an up-and-coming Negro. You sound pretty sure about the result. I ought to be. I got 50 bucks on the black kid. Let's get a ringside seat.
That son of a bitch Hammond made a run for his dressing room. Let's find out what's going on. God damn you, Albert! You get out here right now! Step back, LAPD.